Surprise! Oh, hello. I'm just a fantastic person in a lovely jumper. It is January 31st and I want to finish this because tomorrow is the beginning of Finish It February and this jumper does not count. Hello and welcome to my podcast. This is NJ Knits where I talk about my knitting. What I have is a Finish It February vlog. So I'm just going to run you down on all the projects that I have brought into Finish It February. Um, little sneak peek, I stayed up late last night finishing this so that I wouldn't have it to do in February. This is the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta. I tend to keep Finish It February for like languishing whips and I just work on languishing whips all of February. Um, so I'll show you some of the languishers. This one is nearly finished and it became languishing because I ran out of yarn. What a surprise. It's a little bit small, I would say. Get around my belly. It'll block out though, right? It'll block out. I've, I did this sleeve with my leftovers. I thought it would be good to do both, but I only managed one sleeve. Um, so I got some yarn leftovers gifted by a lovely person. So I'm just starting on the second sleeve now. Um, it was languishing in the position of being half bound off. I don't know what happened. I couldn't finish that tubular bind off and it was it's been like months and months ago so um anyway so this is this is my first one it's going to be highly satisfying because it won't take long uh the next one of course of course the welcome to the jungle the perpetual jumper that will never end oh here it is i you know i need to finish the zebras I feel like I should empty one of these. Don't trust that hinge. There's so many whips here. So welcome to the jungle. It hasn't been languishing that long, so I don't really know if it counts as a proper finish it February whip. But this is a hood pattern by, um, I've forgotten, I'll put it up. Um, and I'm doing it in the bougiest yarn. I'm doing three strands of Cardiff cashmere, the, the fingering weight one. Um, just an unreasonable project. Um, this is the most unreasonable finish it February item. It has been languishing for quite some time. A finished sock. And <laughs> I've got... Now, I might not be exactly at grafting position yet. I might have like three more rows of the dough to do and then grafting. So that's going to be another satisfying finish at February. Because... Here's another little project bag that I've made. What's in this one? Ah, it's a two at a time, just a simple pair of mitts that I'm making from Cardiff Cashmere. I'm doing it two at a time because I don't know how much of this. I have like most of one ball, so I'm just going to see how much I can use. And if I decide I don't have enough, I'll just undo it all. But it's a nice simple project. I, I cast it on and then I like went away for work or something and it's been sitting around for ever since I cast on basically. My Daft Days test, which, oh my God, it's so good. Look at it. I need to finish the sleeves off, but I was encountering a running out of yarn problem. I've got the yarn here now and I just need to finish it. Finish it February. It's so good, look at how good it is. So good. This will probably jump on the needles next because there's not a lot to do. I just have to finish the sleeves and then do the button bound and collar thing. Yeah, it's not it's not a huge amount, but you know, everything's a huge amount when you have a welcome to the jungle. And for now I've got a meeting, so I'm gonna just knit away on that sleeve, which would be quite nice. Although, to be fair, I could start on the Welcome to the Jungle because it's not a thrilling meeting. Maybe I will. No, I feel, I feel like doing that sleeve. Something easy. Okay, that's your update, and I will continue to update you on how I'm doing with my projects throughout the month.
So, I probably won't do this every day, but it's the end of the day um, one of Finish It February. Um, and I have done this much of my sleeve. I haven't really had a lot of knitting time. I was kind of expecting to get it done in one day, but um, I've been busy working. Imagine that. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. I have a sock, a pair of mitts. I'm quite tired. I'm, I still haven't gotten over jet lag, so I'm still going to bed. Actually, today I'm up much later. I've been only able to go to sleep at, like... I've been asleep before half eight every night and awake before half four every morning. But today I managed to stay up till nine. Um, I'm about to go to bed. Okay, good night. See you tomorrow. Okay, good morning. It is the 2nd of February. Um, and I just had a little tip for you. I'm about to finish this sleeve. Um, when I do a Italian bind off or a sewn bind off, I always find that this gets in the way. It like always like traps my my th my yarn as I'm pulling it through. So this is my tiny little tip for you. I just stick the second needle in to the garment like that. Probably a stupid tip that everyone's thought of, but I thought I would share. And also to say, first project is. Um, getting wrapped up now and then I'm gonna head off to the gym and meet up with a nitty friend which is very exciting I'm working from home today so um, so I can do these kinds of things okay see you well hello I've finished my second sleeve here woven in my end and there's one more end to weave in it seems um, it's a long one and then I believe that what I'm going to do is block it first and then I'll decide if this needs some duplicate stitch to... Anyway, blocking needs to happen now. But here it is. I think it's pretty cool. I do think it's a little bit small, but it will do up. It just, you know, it's, it's form fitting on the body line there. We love that. I don't know what that is. It's probably where I, I think I wove in an end there and it just looks very bad. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm going to weave this end and then I'm going to block it. And I probably won't block it now because I've already got something drying, but I'll weave this end in and then I will go to the gym and do my work day. I think the project I'm going to do today, work on today, I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose. I'll get back to you on that, my next Finish It February project. Back from the gym. Starting on this. Got to finish these sleeves. Um, no memory really of what I'm doing so I've got to kind of try and remind myself. Hello, it is February 4th and I have a cold sadly. Um, yesterday we went out and about, my mum and dad are here visiting and we had a nice time and I worked on my Finish It February project number two. I have finished one sleeve of my daft days, little cuff here, and I'm nearly finished with the second one. I didn't have that much left on it, I think it was about here. Um, anyway, so don't be that impressed. Um, and then I'm gonna today start on the neck band and button band, and um we shall go from there so yeah that's where I'm at I did block and add buttons to my other jumper my cardigan so I will show you that here it is it's all finished finish it February item number one ta-da my traveler's cardigan and all I had to do on this was one sleeve and add the buttons and block it 
I've done that and it has blocked out. It's not as tight, fits nicely. I think the sleeves are quite big, but that's okay. Um, I think the pattern just has you work straight the whole way. I probably should have done some decreases, but hey ho. And they're actually a little bit long, these sleeves. I normally make them quite short, my sleeves, so that's something different anyway. I think them being big is kind of makes them more of a standout thing. But yeah, here it is. I'm very pleased with it. I'm hoping this really adds something to this because it's quite... I think it's, I think it's giving Lisa Frank vibes. Anyway, bye for now. Hello, um, excuse the crazy hair. Uh, it is day six of Finish It February. And I have an update on my Darth Days cardigan. I've done the button bands and the cuffs and the sleeves. So I will show you. I've also found a mistake. Fun stuff. So the mistake I found is here. This should be here. So basically, this side is longer than this side by a little bit, and this shoulder is longer than this shoulder because this stripe was supposed to be under here, like this stripe is. Um, so it's uneven, but you know, my body is uneven. My shoulders are slightly uneven. So here is my top of my jeans. If I tuck my shirt in. And this is where this sits. My bind off, I did Italian bind off here, but I tend to do my Italian bind off kind of loosely so that it could be stretchy, but I think I did it too loose because it's kind of flaring. Um, here I did my Italian bind off more tightly and I think it looks much neater. Um, the way this button band is done is kind of odd, I would say. I would prefer to do the button band from here and then add the bottom all together, but instead you pick up along here and what happens is this part then just, because it's ribbing, this part comes, comes in so there's a step here. Also, this is done, and then you pick up here. So again, there's a step here. Now, this could probably all come out in blocking, but part of me... Now, I should probably just block it first. Part of me wants to do like a crocheted edge, just all the way around, just to tidy up this bind off, which is a little bit loose and to fix these steps. But actually, I think I should just weave in the ends and block it. Um, it's very warm. The sleeves are nicely fitted. I still don't like the way this lumps on me, but um, we're gonna leave it for now. I don't have buttonholes in this cardigan. Um, I'm planning to put um, magnets in to close it so that I can wear it this way and this way because I think it looks quite cool this way as well. I like the way the stitch pattern looks on this side. Um, so I'm going to block it and then tidy up all the ends and um, I've ordered the buttons 
the magnets and yeah that's going to be nearly finished just some ends to weave in some blocking and some sewing on of buttons good morning and welcome to this morning's hair um sun is just about to rise in Vancouver. It is seven o'clock in the morning. I am just blocking um, my Daft Days cardigan. I've just woven in all the ends. Here are my leftover balls of wool. Um, I'm going to donate these to a free fiber library as much as I want to keep them. Um, I have no project for them right now, so I'm just going to donate them. I feel really bad about it, but um, I think this is what's sustainable for me right now is um, donating thing leftovers from projects until I get my stash down, basically. Um, so that's what's happening. Uh, so I've just finished that. That's one more project. Um, in Finish It February, finished. So we've finished the Traveller's Cardigan, we've finished the Daft Days Cardigan, and now I thought I would just... I've made some prog progress on my mitts that I had started. Um, all that's left, basically, is this hood, which is kind of a recent cast on, so I don't know how much it really counts. Um, the mitts which again recent and my welcome to the jungle so i think it's probably welcome to the jungle time but just for another little tiny dopamine hit and also because it's just ridiculous i'm gonna finish this tem sock which is literally i mean it's finished folks it's it's finished it just needs to be and I thought, well, whilst the blocking situation, I don't really block socks, to be fair, but I might as well block these, why not? Um, I also finished a skein of yarn, spinning it. Um, I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, so I'm just going to get going on finishing these, and I'll chuck them in the wash in the big blocking bath. And then I will get the Welcome to the Jungle setup started again. How exciting! Hello! So, I may have gone shopping. I went to Sweet Georgia Fibres. This is the spinning sampler. Um, because I wanted to try some different types of wool. I've only really ever spun merino um, from combed top. Which I have to say, it's not my favourite thing in the world. And this is the box, this is what it comes with. So I've got a little bit of Coradell, 11 grams. A little bit of Targi, some BFL silk, some Superwash BFL, some Polworth and silk, and some Gotland. Um, and then it also came with Crafty Jack's Boutique Fibre Candy, BFL and Mohair in a bat, which is dyed. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with these. I want to open them and have a feel. Um, I imagine I'll just spin them up. Oh, it's a fair amount of fibre, 11 grams. This is Cory Dale. I reckon I'll just like do some singles and see how I get on. So if I didn't tell you, I'm renting a spinning wheel whilst I'm here, um, which is really cool that I can do that. Um, I'm renting an Ashford Kiwi, and then I've just rented one from Sweet Georgia because this one needs to go back to the uh, the shop. This is Targi and it's, I really like how the Targi feels. I really like it. I think Targi might be my favorite without even 
trying it out. I can just sort of tell that I really love it. It's my kind of fibre, I think. It feels more spongy and it feels more grippy and it feels like it's just asking to be spun. It's like, please spin me. Um, BFL silk. Now, I've just spun up a 50-50 silk and um, muskox fibre blend. So I feel like I, I'm okay with silk. The BFL is definitely like slippy and smooth. I might try spinning this on the fold. I'm saying these terms like I know what I'm talking about. I don't really. Superwash, BFL. This also feels like smoother and, and like long, but a little bit more grippy because it doesn't have the silk. The Polworth and Silk. Now I got some of this. I got some of the Targi, the Corydale, and the Polworth, Polworth and Silk. And actually the Blueface Lester and Silk. I would love to try Polworth just on its own, but the Polworth seems like sp slightly spongier than the BFL, maybe? This is so exciting. And then here is the Gotland. Oh, this is like definitely long wool. It feels like there's less here because obviously it's very long. <laughs> Much stronger. Um, it's quite smooth, but I feel like it would be nice to like blend it with something. Like, I don't know, I do have a, car a drum carder right now. I think I'm going to return it tomorrow. So I could try blending the Gotland with some stuff. And then this is the BFL, 70% BFL and 30% kid mohair. So this is just a fun color. I might do this one and and mix it with the superwash BFL. That might be fun. I think I'm I'm just going to play around. I might what I might do is like take a small amount of one of these ones that I already have some of and um, and like mix it with some of the Gotland I might like I might like do little I don't know little experiments oh now I really just want to spin this 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 up I might just do it now whoopsies <laughs> Oopsies, never mind. Oopsies, I'm just gonna spin. Oh no! I quite like the kiwi. Um, it's a fun, like it's quite easy to put together. My only experience is with a very old, like antique spinning wheel. So I've never experienced like a new spinning wheel and it's fun. I can't exactly say that it's like 10 times more like easier to spin. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd be telling the truth of that if I said that. Um, it feels like it's definitely nice, um, but I think it's not particularly that much different from from my wheel, like in terms of like what I'm getting out of it. More fiddling, it's more bits, but I don't necessarily know that there's more that's easier. Apparently I'm just spinning now. Oopsies. Apparently you do this. I think this needs to be looser so that it spins. 
No, it needs to be tighter so that it spins, so that it goes straight on. Oh, that was way too tight. Anyway, I'll come back. This is not a great angle. No. What can I say? There's so much natural light in this place. Is that okay? I'm going to do a little bit of morning spinning before I get ready for work. I need to be leaving at... in an hour, basically. Basically. So, I'm going to do some spinning. I have a... undisclosed Ashford. I'm spinning at an undisclosed ratio, which I think is 10 to 1. I'm still quite overspinning my singles. And I'm doing BFL Silk Blend from Sweet Georgia. I'm finding that I'm losing my singles sometimes. I especially, I don't know any new spinners out there, but I'm finding it especially hard starting again. Like starting, uh, if I've stopped spinning for a bit and starting back up I just mean like you know pick it up the next day kind of thing just even just if I stop mid you know just to change the thing starting again I just find the starting kind of difficult um, yeah that's all I'm not very I don't think I'm very um, what's the word I don't have good stuff to say today I'm not, I'm not filled with eloquence. Eloquence was the word I was looking for. Not very eloquent today, which is fine. Um, so, I don't really know anything about spinning. I won't lie to you. I've watched some videos, as many people probably have. I'm not a great video watcher learner. I kind of hate watching videos to learn things. Um, I would say... If I were to order the types of ways I like to learn, um, doing is top. I like to learn by doing. Kinesthetic learner, for sure, especially with skills. Um, for information, I like to learn with with words, so verbal, verbal learning. Um, and I like to digest those words through sound, usually. However, I'm also happy to read the words. But I think really for me, the key is the verbalness of it. Um, when I hear words, I can turn them into ideas in my brain. When I see ideas, they don't become ideas in my brain. I'm very non-visual. So I, I find videos really annoying because essentially a video is like 90% wasting my time not videos like podcasts or like entertainment, but a video to teach me something is like essentially 90% wasting my time with 10% information. And so I hate learning, I hate learning things through videos. If I'm trying to look for some information and I look up like how to do an SSK decrease or something like that, and I just get six videos, I, the rage I feel, I, it, Google won't even give me the option of just seeing like a an, a, a verbal tutorial. It won't even like tell me like knit one, pearl one, slip the pearl one over the knit one. I know that's wrong, but you know what I mean. It won't even give me verbal instructions for things like that, especially knitting instructions. It just is like your options are six different videos. Go. And I'm like, I hate this so much. It so, makes me so angry. Not that people are out there making videos. That doesn't make me angry. Those people are great and it helps everyone. And I sometimes need a video to understand while well, something's happening. Um, so I'm not saying I, I, I never use videos and I think videos are wrong, but it just annoys me that I can, sometimes I can't find written verbal instructions on how to do things with knitting. Sometimes Google just doesn't want to give that to me. It's out there and I do find it eventually, but like Google's just like, why would you want that? You don't want that, why would you want that? And I'm just like, sorry, Google, you don't know me. Please stop pretending like you know me. Like I said, I'm not eloquent today. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, I think it's really a fascinating question, learning about how you learn. It's one of those things that I think we don't learn about in school, which is really, really weird and unhelpful. Um, 
firstly, if like s- teachers in school spent a unit talking about how you learn, and the students all figured out how they learned, it would help the teacher. Because they'd be like, oh, Johnny's a kinesthetic learner. That makes a lot of sense. Really easy for me to now help Johnny out. So it would help the teacher. It would help the students in their whole lives to know how they learn. And I could be saying this, and everybody's doing this in school now. So that, you know, please take the fact that I'm on a diatribe with no information with a grain of salt. But I know for sure in my schooling, I did not get a little unit on learning styles and how we learn until I went to education, university for education, and learned how to be an educator. Then we learned about that. And they were like, they told us all, they said, now when you go out into the world to educate, keep this information a secret. Only you are allowed to know it. They didn't say that, it's a lie. But yeah, I feel like it would be a really useful thing to do in schools with kids is just spend time learning about how you learn. The the first time I learned that I was an auditory learner, I was like 24. I was really surprised and I figured out that I am a auditory learner. So then I took that into, because I think I was at, I think I was, I was at education, basically doing my master's in education at the time. So I went into my really boring lecture class where I would sit and just take notes on the slides and then, you know, take the exams, etc. And I was like, let me just, let me just see, because it was very close, I think, to exams. And I just, I, I, I just was like, I'm going to try just listening and not writing. And... I, when I went to like revise the information, the, the, the stuff from the lectures where I hadn't written down a, thing, a single word and just sat and listened to them, I retained a hundred times better than the stuff on which I had copious notes. And I was like, your girl's been wasting a lot of time writing notes for 20, well, I haven't been writing notes when I was five, but you know, for a long time, for most of my educational career, I was told you need to write notes to, to be good at school. So I wrote notes. And it turns out not everyone needs to write notes to be good at school. Some people actually better at school when they don't write notes. And I just feel like that's the kind of information that you can be checking out when you're 12, 13, 14, I don't know, maybe 17. And maybe all that stuff really changes a lot as you're through those ages, but I have a feeling there's, there's, there's a lot that can be gained from just thinking about different ways to learn things. Because then, you know, you don't have kids being like, I hate writing notes, therefore I don't like school, therefore I'm not smart, therefore I finish. You know? You could have kids being like, I don't write notes, therefore I'm not going to write notes. Let's see what other information I can soak up. You know? So anyway... That was an interesting, lengthy discussion on learning styles. But that's, that's all to say that, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't love learning through videos. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I do it sometimes. And like I said, I did it for a couple things. But when I do it, I tend to do it, like, background. So I'll watch videos about how to spin while I'm like driving to work. And then I'll come home and I'll just like try some things. Um, because I, I, like I say, I think in, in terms of like doing, learning physical things or learning skills, I'm a kinesthetic learner. So I have to do it in order to understand even what I'm doing. Um, and it's, a, I think kinesthetic learning is tricky People who are kinesthetic learners, I think, have a hard time in school, especially, for a number of reasons. One of them, obviously, being that school isn't set up for kinesthetic learning. It's set up for verbal, visual, and auditory learning. Um, and if you're not those one of those three things, then you're basically like a bad person. <laughs> the way school has set itself up, essentially. 
and that's not helpful to anyone. But um, you know, it, school's trying its hardest, right? It's doing its best, and it's flawed, just like everything that's trying its hardest. But I think the other reason kinesthetic learning is is difficult is because it's it's really tricky to describe and to understand. And maybe that's because we don't spend enough time thinking about it because nothing's set up for it. And so everyone's just like, ignore it, it'll go away. <laughs> maybe if we spent time, if we spent time like, you know, with kinesthetic learning, we would have a lot more language about it and be a lot more able to discuss what the heck it is. But um, for me, kinesthetic learning means you can show me a thing and I'll just, it, it'll just, it'll just be like squares in my eyes. I'll just be like, okay, it's a thing. You're showing me a thing. I don't, whatever. It's a thing. Please stop. I, but if, as I do it, I'll be like, aha, uh -huh, so this is too strong. This is too light. This is too much twist. This is too little twist. I can feel that happening for me. And... Another example is like I've done some acrobatics in my in my time in the world and we would do like you know sort of body shape kind of things you climb on someone and put your leg over here and they put their leg over there and when they showed me what we were about to do I just I could see it I could see it happening like okay he's got his leg on but they, he would just, you know, someone would say a flag, for example. So, so here's an example. And as you experience this, see how you, what kind of a learner you are. I'm going to verbally explain what a flag is. Now, if they had done this, I, it would have been better for me. Um, so a flag is where one person, the base is standing, standing up, pretty normally, like a person stands up. And then the person that's doing the, I don't know, the, the person that's not the base um, is going to put their one leg on the base's thigh, their foot on the thigh. And I, I could be getting the specifics of this wrong, so please, please keep that in mind. Don't take these instructions and run with them. And then they're going to put their other foot on, around the back of the base's neck and they're essentially going to be pointing their whole body horizontally to the ground at a 90 degree angle to the way that the base is standing um, now if someone described that to me I'd, it'd be struggle it'd be struggle set city for me I'd be like like if someone ever gives me directions they lose me at so you I'm gone and immediately gone like I, I don't even get lost by the first instruction I get lost before they start the first instruction because I'm immediately just like this is not gonna nope nope can't nope can't you just go so you know where the blah 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 is nope you go but beyond the blah 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 just to the other side where there's a thing on the on the cross from the nope 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 all I hear in my head is no 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 <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm pretty bad at that, but I'm better if someone described it like that to me, I would, I would be better off than just seeing someone doing a flag and having them go, now you do that because that visual information, it's an image. The image just doesn't translate into actionable instructions for me in my head very easily. Um, so words help okay I gotta put my leg on his thigh and then my other leg around the back of his neck okay fine I, can, I that makes a little more sense and maybe in concert with seeing the image that's helpful but really what I need to do is I need to put my leg on his my foot on his thigh and my foot around the back of his neck to understand what it is that I'm doing it's quite difficult with acrobatic type stuff because it's like well you can't just do a thing to learn it you kind of have to practice before you can do it. <laughs> I think that's the, the probably the best way I've described my non-visual miss is that when I see an image it, it my brain doesn't translate it to actionable items very easily.
that is definitely what it is. So I'd probably be better off like reading a book about spinning. I would I would probably find that really helpful and and useful. Um, but yeah, I just find so that is to say I, I've watched a few videos about spinning, but I really mostly have just mostly just I mostly just spin on vibes, guys. I just do it on vibes. You probably see me do like I don't know like four or five different draw techniques this in this video, probably drafting, drawing, I don't know whatever it is. You probably see me do like four or five different ones, cause I'm just spinning on vibes. I don't think I'm ever gonna spin a sweater's quantity of anything. I don't think, I don't think that's in the cards for me. I think, I think, spinning is is fun for. When I first learned to spin, well, not first, but when I first got a spinning wheel, I immediately bought, like, kilos of single colors of wool to make sweaters quantity of yarn. And I think that's what kind of killed my spinning mojo in the very beginning, was doing that. <laughs> because also the, the kilo was, it was, I would get a kilo of... It was a good deal. It was like it was in Lithuania where I was working at the time, and it was like nineteen euros for a kilo of combed merino top. And anyone who's done a lot of combed merino top, I eventually gave up on the blanket I was making because I was planning to spin four kilos of yarn to make this blanket. Like, what was I? I don't know what I was thinking. I honestly have no idea what I was thinking. I maybe got halfway through it. Maybe. So I maybe did a, a couple kilos <laughs> of spinning merino top, combed merino top, and I was so sick of it. I was just like, get me finished with this. And I had this black yarn that I was planning to make a jumper for Holly out of once I spun it. And I was just like, I just, no, it's a no. <laughs> and then I, I bought some, someone wanted me to spin some yarn for like a wall hanging, one of my sister-in-law's. And um, I, so I got some like fancy sort of like multicolored silk and a bunch of other stuff yarn. And it was so much fun to spin. And I was like, oh, I kind of ruined my spinning mojo by telling myself to spin all this um, combed merino top, which I have since learned from podcasts, Stitches in Starlight. Looking at you, the combed merino top is not very fun to spin. And so that's why I rented a wheel and tried out a bunch of fibers from Sweet Georgia Fiber and I'm really enjoying it. I don't I don't like how smooth and silky silk is to spin. I prefer the more like grabby yarns for spinning. I think that's more fun. Um, and actually I did some long wool in my breed study and that was really fun to spin. The long wool was crazy fun. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. But so far, I think my favorite has been the Targi. But I am excited because I've got some 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 roving, some actual roving merino. So it's like carded merino, and it looks really sticky and tactile and fun to spin. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, silk turns out, guys, silk is silky. Silk is silky. Public service announcement alert. Silk is silky. So keep that in mind. And I don't, I, I don't hate it, but I don't love it, the silkiness. But yeah, I'm, I'm finding like the fun in spinning is like making spin cycle for cheaper than spin cycle. <laughs> That's what I'm having fun with. And it's fun to like do, see the colors change, you know? Also, I just had a plying nightmare I spun a bunch of Corydale, and then I just had a nightmare plying situation. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. I don't know what was happening, but it was a nightmare plying situation. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And that yarn is gonna be weird to knit with because it's like it's that kind of like. I washed it and did all the stuff and it's it's a lot better but it's that kind of stuff that's like it's curly 
it's applied, but it's still curly. It still curls up on itself. So, you know, I'm just going to do what I always do, which is just kind of ignore it and roll with it. See what happens. I'll probably make something, hate it, give it away. And thus the cycle continues. Um, so yeah, this is my BFL. I've done Targi, I've done Corydale, and I've done a, a mini breed study from Sweet Georgia. And I have Polworth and Silk coming up next, followed by the Carded Merino. And that is all the fiber that I am going to be spinning so far. It's really fun. It, this is not working well. Those are some fat, fat mamas right there. Those little singles right there are going to be real fat. That's fine. I like this thing where you do a little ab workout while you, while you spin. You kind of just like... So yeah. This was a morning spin. Welcome to Finish It February where I completely ignore all of the project that I need to finish. And I did say that without a plural, because I'm just talking about the Welcome to the Jungle, where I ignore that and, and just get obsessed with spinning for a month. <laughs> oh, we're nearly done. How satisfying. That sounded really ungenuine. That's exactly the time I need to be getting ready for work. Although I've already done my stretches, so it gives me some extra time. I do stretches every morning, folks. It's very important to keep up the health of the body. Turns out I have a a tear in the inside of my hip joint, so apparently nothing to do about that apart from stretches to deal with it, pain meds, and or surgery. Fun way to finish that spin. Next time we get to ply, but look at how pretty this is. Come and look. Can you see it? Is it blown out by the, the sunshine? Possibly. Possibly. The full on sunshine. Let's try it the other way around. Ooh, pretty. Here's the other one. See how overspun those are? Ooh, yeah, baby. Um, yeah. So, please hold. So, yeah, um, thanks for joining me for a little morning spin and chat. That's all I have to say, I think. Hello! So, it is day 20 of Finish It February, aka the 20th of February. I found a mug in a charity shop. I've got some white tea in it. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do some rows on my Welcome to the Jungle. Let me show you how far I have gotten. I've done that. I haven't filled it in yet because I left my pens over there. Um, so this means that I only have 22 rows left. <gasps> so I'm going to put a timer on. I'm reading, currently reading Wolf Hall by um, Hilary Mantel. Excellent book. Highly recommend. Very big. Very long. Um, but I feel like it's not taking me long at all to get through this. Um, and it's very good, so highly recommend. I'm gonna open that up. I've got my chart over here, and I'm gonna try and get this so that it can watch me. And I'm gonna do some knitting and reading. I also have a little pastry in this bowl. It is a perfect afternoon, afternoon. Perfect afternoon off. Um, this was what I did on my last sitting from from this little stitch marker. Uh, so like six rows and 22 more to go. It's not too many, but it's still quite a lot. <laughs> I think I can do it. I think I can finish the body by the end of finish of February. That's my goal. Ha 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 
haha, I can't read and do this. <laughs> I'm going to put on a podcast, probably. Ha ha ha, ha. Impossible. So I've just finished a one row, one round, and it has been 41 minutes my podcast has been going. So that's how long it takes me to go one round. It's quicker within an hour, but only about 20 minutes. I guess that's fine. 40 minutes a round. 40 minutes times 22, that's a lot of minutes. Okay, that's two rows. You don't need to watch anymore. Okay, so needless to say, Finish It February has not been going as planned. I'm currently 18 rows away from finishing the body. Um, so it's still possible. Let's see. I'm really hoping to finish the body before I leave Canada. Um, but let's see. Let's find out. Um, but I wanted to give you an update on my spinning, which is where all my attention has been going recently. Um, and yes, so I'm going to show you some of that. I don't know if I showed you this already. I'll find out when I video edit all of this stuff. But this is the spinning sampler from Sweet Georgia. And I spun it up. And I put it back in the box because I just liked, liked unboxing it. Ta-da! My yarn. 
this is every single um, uh, breed in the breed sampler, apart from the BFL. The BFL is here, along with um, this uh, hand-dyed bit of yarn that came in the sampler. The BFL is two ply apart from the end which is gone three ply because it's the, it's a two ply of BFL with the, the, the dyed stuff. Um, but this here you can see is just the BFL and it's three ply because I just chain plied it. All of the breed study is chain plied. And it's the first spinning I did and you can see it's incredibly thick and thin. So that's my breed study. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. I was going to make something, um, but now I'm not sure because I've, I've pegged some more spinning for that. Um, the next yarn that I spun up was the Targi, and I, I stupidly balled it after it dried instead of, I mean, that's not stupid, but instead of um, leaving it in the skein where it was all pretty and you can see it, so it's not as pretty to look at but it is so squishy, it's so lovely. And the chain, the ply worked so well. Um, I really enjoyed, this was my favorite one to spin. That's from Sweet Georgia and it is the colorway Storm Chaser, which is one of my favorite colorways, I think. Cool turns, babes, cool turns. And then Corydale was the next one that I spun. And I had a real rough time with plying this i did this as a fractal three three um three ply fractal um but the colors are cool the colorway is from sweet georgia it's tea leaves and it's the corey dale base so that was that braid and then i just finished drying the BFL Silk, I've got the little labelled from when it was in a braid. Here's the BFL Silk, and that I did as a two-ply fractal. And this, I would say that the dye changed a lot after washing it. It was, it became much less, it became more, I would say slightly more muddied and more like mixed, the colour. Uh, yeah, this was a two-ply fractal, and the colorway is Snow Angel. And then I just finished the, um, it's drying, the Polworth and Silk. Um, and that is a two-ply straight down the middle. Um, and that's drying now. The next braid I'm going to spin up is this, um, uh, this is roving so it's not comb top it's merino and it's um from knotty by nature hand dyed look at those colors some really darks and then there's some lights as well which i'm enjoying so i think i'm just going to spin this straight from the braid i'm not going to break it up in any way so let's see how that goes I mean, I don't know, I haven't looked at it. I could maybe try and do some kind of fade with it. That could be fun. Um, but I haven't opened it up to look at it. So that's that. And then the thing I really wanted to do was do a little, oh, I'll leave the Polworth silk out to put on the next one when it finishes. Unboxing with you. I got this from Sanjo Silk, which is a thing on Granville Island in Vancouver. It's a great, great um, thing, and I also bought some yarn from them. Whoopsies. Um, but this is a silk spinning sampler. Um, so let's unbox it because I'm not actually sure what's in it. So, first thing here 100% silk tassa silver. Or sliver? Tassa? So that's this one. Um, very, very soft. It's a brownish color, nice sheen to it. I don't know anything about silk, so I'm just making up terms here. Just say things about it. Um, I'm gonna just spin these up. Whoa, this is so soft. 
This is Bombix silk. I, I literally, it, it feels like butter. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know how you're supposed to spin silk. I've only ever spun it with stuff. This is just, I've never felt something so soft. That's incredibly silk. I mean, incredibly soft. <laughs> it's also blowing out a lot, but it's just like a creamy white. Um, oh look, there's a cocoon here. This is 100% Tussa silk. Here's a cocoon. Um, whoa. That's strange. Is that like a dead silkworm in there? There's something rattling in it. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna put it back in the bag. Um, this is Tussa silk fiber. And this is like slightly, not as soft and slightly creamier than, than the Bombix silk. I mean, literally this Bombix is ridiculous. I don't know why everything's blowing out so much. There's no, it's not sunny. It's like filtered light anyway. Um, and definitely the first silk I grabbed feels more like wool in terms of its softness. This is white airy silk. I think airy silk is natural. This one has a bit of like, um, you know how silk has a bit of like a feeling of like crunchiness almost? This one you can feel that, that sort of crunchy feeling. That's interesting. Um, another brown one. This is penduncle tussa silk. Penduncle. Tussa silk. Um, this one is similar to the other brown one. Like, it's soft, but it's not like... <gasps> we have 100% bombix silk in hankies. I don't know what you do with a hanky. It's like... It's sort of been processed flat. Like, it's like a sheet, almost like a sheet of... I don't know, it's very soft. Um, so here is this little thing, very cute. And I don't know what's inside. I asked the woman who was selling it and she said, I don't know, what does it say? And I said, it, it, the paper doesn't say anything because the paper just says this. Um, Fly to Fancy Sanjo Silk, photo by Kim McKenna. Kim McKenna, instructor. So, interesting. Let's find out what's in here. Ooh, there's more packets. Oh, so cute. So this is green tea. Harunocho Genmaicha. Roasted and popped rice in a very well balanced center. So delicious! A lovely tea! Oh, so cute! I'm so happy, I'm gonna make it. And this one, it's toast. Nourishing, satisfying, comforting, like buttered toast. A weird yet delicious tea. Take Da Hong Pao from Wu Yi Mountain, one of the most famous cultivators in China grows in a completely different land. The result is tea that is easygoing and satisfying, like toast. Cool. O2 tea in Vancouver, BC. Oh, so cute. That must be what this is. So this is just a packet of tea. How sweet. And then this is Assam Kahibari, heirloom L1. To family traditionally grew fruit and veggies or organically in Northern, Northern Assam. He's pioneered organic farming in the region, is now men mentor to most neighbours. His farm is a happy place for ele ele wild elephants, pig deer and peacocks. Cute! So this is some black tea. Oh, so cute! I got, I got tea! I feel so loved! <laughs> Even though I bought this for myself. Flights of Fancy Tea and Silk. Sandro Spinning Workshop with Ken Tim McKenna. We invite you to experience working with silk from three origins that also produce spectacular tea leaves. Your tea journey will start in Japan with Gen Genmaicha. This is a blend of Sencha and the foothills of Mount Fuji with roasted rice from Miyazaki. 
Expect a heartwarming brew that can be very well, well paired with mochi or ice cream. So cute. So your silk that you're spinning, there's teas that match it from the same region. Ah! Obsessed. Silkworms feed solely on mulberry leaves. Japanese mawata hankies are made from degummed cocoons that are spread over... That's this one. Stretched over a square frame. Indian tropical tassa silkworms feed primarily on Arjun and Asan leaves. The Indian tassa tassa silk roving is a lovely golden colour um, and is produced from the cocoon silk alone. The bronze coloured tassa is a blend of silk from both the cocoon and the pendicle. I don't know what that means actually. Um, and then Indian airy silkworms Samaya ricini feed, pri feed primarily on castor leaves. This species of silkworm, I don't know which one this is. Oh, this is the Eri silk, Indian. This must be the one where you drink the Assam tea. This species of silkworm presented in this workshop spins an open-ended cocoon. The silk has an incredibly soft hand and a pearlescent glow. Chine Chinese oak tussa is from the species Anthorea perineae. This species of silkworm is also referred to as temperate tussa. That must be this one. It feeds primarily on oak leaves. Spinning fibre from this is almost as luxurious and bombix and a lovely soft golden beige colour. Yeah, that's this one. The Ch Chinese bombix mori fibre supplied is of the highest quality. The fibre is long, white and extremely lustrous. Yeah, that's this one. This is crazy feeling. It lit it just feels like it's the craziest feeling. Um, so anyway, so exciting. I'm going to spin some silk. It will be interesting. But for now, I'm going to do some knitting. I'm going to knit on my... I'm going to go work on my Welcome to the Jungle. Okay, bye. Hello, team. It's the 28th of February, and it's your update on Finish It February. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Humans and non-humans. I have finished the body today. I did the last row and a half. And you know what? I've actually sped up my rows to be um, all the way to 30 minutes per row. Not bad, is it? Not bad at all. And yeah, I finished the body. That was my goal for Finish It February. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, um, consider. I just, I some, I just can't. I can't say all those things. I don't know why. I just can't. It's weird. If you enjoyed it, then excellent. That's so good. And um, 
pleased to have been part of your enjoyment of life.